beer colour is one of the most important characteristics appraised by the consumer. Therefore, it's important that we get it consistent and appropriate for our beer brand or beer style. There are a number of factors that influence beer colour, including the colour of your base malts, colour of specialty malts, processing conditions such as times at high temperatures, and any additives such as caramels or adjuncts. Colour was originally measured via comparison with glass standards, and in the 1950s, a series of discs with colour ranging from 2 to 27 EBC units was adopted by the European Brewery Convention. It is still used in many breweries and malt houses, and I'll demonstrate how this is done. The first part of measuring colour is the sample preparation. The beer must be degassed and filtered if hazy. Degassing is done by repeated agitation and release of pressure, and filtration is usually done through a 0.45 micron filter. If your sample is over 27 EBC units, you may have to dilute it as well. The colour comparator has two discs, each containing a range of coloured glass standards. The aim is to match the colour of the sample with the colour of the glass standards. For EBC measurements, they come with two pairs of discs. One pair covers the range of 2 to 10 EBC units in steps of a 0.5 unit. The other pair is from 10 to 20 EBC units in steps of one unit. We place the appropriate discs in the comparator in the correct orientation. In the colour comparator, a beam of light is split in three directions. The first goes through the left-hand colour disc, the second goes through the sample, and the third goes through the right-hand colour disc. The three paths are brought together through a prism so that they can be visualised side by side. We visualise this through the comparator where there are three windows, left-hand disc, sample, right-hand disc. And we actually rotate the discs until our sample matches the colour of one or the other discs. The EBC colour units are then read from that disc. The EBC comparator can also come with a range of sample cells. These are precision glass sample holders of different path lengths and we can actually use these if we don't need to dilute it. However, the visualisation method can be subject to errors such as colour blindness of the operators. And so a spectroscopic method is now more commonly in use. The absorbance of beer at 430 nanometers in a 10 millimetre cell multiplied by 25 is used to determine the colour in EVC units. The first part of measuring the colour is again the sample preparation as discussed previously. Once the sample is prepared, it may need to be diluted so it can be measured. The maximum EBC units that a sample can have using a spectrophotometer is about 20. Firstly, a sample of water is placed in the cuvette. The wavelength is checked as 430 nanometers and the spectrophotometer is zeroed. Then the beer sample is placed in the cuvette and its absorbance read and recorded. The adsorbent should ideally be in the range from 0.1 to 0.8 for the most accurate results. For EBC units, the absorbance in a 10 mm cuvette is multiplied by 25 and then by any dilution factor that we might have used. For SRM measurements, or lover bond, a half inch cuvette is used and the result is multiplied by 10 and any dilution factor. So SRM is approximately half the EBC colour units. Note historically a different wavelength was used in the IOB methods, so be careful using very old conversion factors. So just use the conversion factor that was discussed above. 